Let's now look at the cloud and also virtual networks, two unrelated topics, uh, basically, that are kind of sitting on their own in the specifications. So I thought I'd tackle them at once. First of all, the cloud. So cloud computing is the delivery of services over the internet, which in this case is the cloud. So cloud is obviously a very generic term and is usually, it's kind of implied that you're talking about these services like servers you can use, storage like cloud storage, software you can use, so through like web applications and things like analytics which you won't use but businesses use perhaps over the cloud. So the actual data for all of these services are hosted, are stored by the cloud provider and you access it in this client server relationship through some kind of interface over the internet. So let's talk about some advantages and disadvantages of using cloud computing because this might be a, a really good exam question. So firstly, there's a huge advantage to having the ability, having the convenience to access these services from anywhere, at any time. But of course, this is reliant on actually having an internet connection. So you could obviously access your storage and software locally if you don't have an internet connection, but then you can access it on a different device, if you know what I mean. So you can access these services from any device, anywhere, if you have an internet connection. Also, all the hardware that's actually hosting these services is clearly managed externally, so the kind of cost involved and the expertise involved in setting up these complicated servers and providing these interfaces and so on is done by the cloud hosting company, which makes things a lot easier for the user, although some people would obviously like to have more control. Any updates can be applied server-side, and so it gives the impression of automatic updates. You don't have to physically update your software like you might do if it's stored locally. It's done without you knowing anything about it. And you'd hope that cloud computing providers have better security than you. If you're, if you're a large company hosting loads of data, you'd assume they've got really strong security measures in place. But of course, you're fully reliant on the host actually having that security, and you're fully reliant in general, you're reliant on the, on the hardware being online. If they go offline and their servers go down, you know, there's not much you can do about it. So yeah, the data and security is their responsibility. You're powerless in that regard. And the final point about cost, if you're a single person, you can't exactly call up Microsoft and negotiate for a, for a better deal. Because if you're a very large business, in the same way that you can buy in bulk and the cost becomes less per unit, it's the same for services like this. If you're a very large company, costs can go down, but for smaller users, it may be more costly to use uh, cloud computing. Right, so now I'll move on to something completely different. Let's now look at virtual networks. So as the name suggests, anything in virtual and is usually a warning sign that it's not quite as it seems. A virtual network is software based, which immediately is like, huh? Because networks are, are wired physically, they're connected physically, so it's much more about hardware usually. But a virtual network is like part of a, another network, a LAN or WAN, that has been sectioned off by software. So ignoring the colours here for a second, you've got a WAN here, so you've got a LAN here connected to a WAN, so this could be the internet. And each colour here is representing a virtual network. So this is something that's been sort of siphoned off or sectioned off. So we've got a green virtual network and we've got one uh, represented by the yellow colour. So the actual hardware, the actual layout and um, connections are the same, but they behave like they are directly connected to these virtual links. So you can see here that the connection between this LAN and the WAN is through this single point here, and it goes through a few computers, a few routers. But they actually behave like they're directly connected. And virtual networks are used for quite a few reasons, which we won't necessarily go into, but they can have their own security and encryption and long credentials. So this might be a, this yellow one might be a company and you're kind of, you're working from home perhaps and you're connecting to the company's internet through, through a virtual network. This might be a VPN, which is a virtual private network. This might be in America and you're connecting to it and your all your traffic is going through this uh, server in America so you can watch uh, American Netflix or certainly that used to work. So there are various reasons why you might use virtual networks but the point is they're software based, some software is making the network behave like it's connected directly even though the connections are actually the same as they would be without a virtual network, it just behaves like it's directly connected.